All right guys, today we're gonna offshore and we're gonna troll some really big baits, some big blue runners. We're gonna show you how we catch them and how we use them to catch kingfish. And we see a pretty cool hammerhead. Well guys, another day on the water. Um, today is starting out tough. Yeah. Bait is nowhere to be seen. Driving all the way down to the pier looking for it. A lot of guys are looking for it. Don't see anything yet. So uh, we'll give it a few more minutes. If not, we may be uh, jigging up some bait with some sabikis. But they say the fish are here, so uh, it should be a good day. We'll see. There may not be any bait along the beach. So we might want to think about going offshore. So that's what we decided to do. So we get to a wreck. Um, artificial wreck and we start jigging baits and marking them on my recorder and we were thinking maybe they're like cigar minnows or Spanish sardines or greenies you know little baits great baits for kingfish but we keep breaking them off and we finally pull one in we find it's a big blue runner so we don't normally get big blue runners that close in shore we're only about 10 miles offshore of course some guys go way out we'll go out there is like Elton Bottom these are big natural bottom 21 bottom you know places about 40 you know 40 miles out natural bottoms and yeah there are a lot of blue runners out there fighting awful hard for it. i don't think i've ever had a blue runner last more than 30 minutes that bird's not like you know where they're at we're still marking some you should you should feel them there we go Blue I'll take them. Now, when jigging up blue runners, the typical sabikis that we use are too small. We typically use like a number eight sabiki. Great for cigar minnows, but for blue runners, they're just too small. They'll break off and you can't get a very good hook set. So you're gonna need these bigger sabiki rigs. I got the size right here. I'll put links in the description for you know the sizes and things like that. But it's a much bigger hook. Rather than having six or eight branch hooks coming off, Typically only has four, some might have six, but, but four is good. You don't really want much more than four because if you get four blue runners on your line, it's going to be hard to pull in. Go ahead and drop it. Starting to park them. What do you think stretch is off? Um, could be Spanish or something. Sometimes the blue runners are so uh, strong that they break it. We got some between 25 and 50 now. Pretty good, pretty good bait school. Now also, when catching blue runners on Sabiki, you want a stronger rod and reel setup. You know, a light spinner, which is great for cigar minnows, is not good for big blue runners. It'll, it'll work you too much. So we were just using some of our kingfish reels, like TLDs, those work good. If you got bottom reels, you know, four alt, it's a little old school, but those work good, or, or maybe newer ones like pin fathoms or, or whatever you're using, you know, some heavier braided line, those work great. Put a weight on it, send it down, jig it up. And once you feel some hits, kind of hold it and work it. Usually a couple more grab on and then crank them on in. From there, just put them in your live well and you're good to go. Now, blue runners are a pretty big bait. They're much bigger than cigar minnows or pogies or things like that. I guess the downside is you're not gonna catch maybe as many little fish, which to me is not really a downside. You know, if, if you say, hey, you can have this bait, but you're only gonna catch big fish. I'm like, okay, I love big fish, you know? Well, don't we all love big fish? So that's the cool thing about blue runners. They're very strong, they're very hardy. They live well in the live well. You can troll them all day and you're probably not gonna catch as many little fish. You're probably gonna catch really good quality fish. Maybe if you're trolling, you might have to bump the RPMs up a little or like, you know, we typically use two sea anchors. Maybe you only need one sea anchor because that lets you go a little faster. If you go too slow, you know, those bottom baits on the downrigger can swim up to your downrigger and get tangled. Or, you know, you might see your baits up top and all of a sudden they start swimming in front of you. It's not good. So just watch your speed, watch your drag settings, and be ready to catch a fish. 
fishing uh, about the same areas we caught the bait you know you don't have to catch them and run you know we typically do that on the beach catch your bait run offshore somewhere run somewhere don't get me wrong there are fish a lot of times tarpon right there in the bait bait pods but you know if you want kingfish you go offshore stuff like that but in this case we sabiki the baits up and we started trolling right there we got a first kingfish really good fish Kind of you just got uh, those two out. Yeah. Oh, there he goes. There goes. Make another run. He didn't like the boat or what? Yeah. Dang. He's trying to work back. He took out the creed. Wow. You didn't love it? Uh, I mean, he's still good, but it, it did make a good right. run. You want to reel that one in there? Yeah, um, just over. There we go, I'm good. Okay, I think I can. Yeah, I see a little color, but I can't. I can't tell. He's kind of towards the back. You might want to. I think it's a king. There we go. Yeah. A good decent sized kingfish, pretty strong. Put a good fight on. We get him to the boat, which is great. Here, man. If I have to lose that drag a little bit. Might be a. <laughs> Oh, there he goes. Could be. <laughs> it's a king. Uh, little king. Yeah. Something, I don't know, it seemed good nuts, and then you see a splash, and he's running steady. He was up top, he like, I saw him kind of chasing, and then the bait took off, and he splashed it pretty good, yeah. What is that? Uh, it's not in a beach. It well, it was chasing him at the top, whatever it was. Hi, Johnson. Where are you at? He's uh, straight to your left. Okay. Uh, I mean, I, I see his little color. I can't can't tell what I it is. Here. He's coming in the wrong way, John. Okay. I'm gonna gap him. Thank you. Oh man, <laughs> that line's all wrapped around him, through his mouth, hooked on the tail. 
We ended up catching three kingfish, a lot, lot of fun, really cool, put up a good fight. It was nice for me getting to practice with blue runners. Most guys only use them when they go way out or if they're tournament fishing. You know, a big truck will bring them up, sell, sell them for like 10 or 12 bucks a piece. <laughs> good business, I guess. But they're great for tournament baits and it's good to practice with them and just troll them out here because you'll get some good practice. Big fish catch big bait, right? So far we're two to one on blue runners. Another cool thing was we had this hammerhead coming to our spread. Not a huge hammerhead, maybe six, seven feet, but he was sure active. I mean, he was like was darting in and out, chasing baits, you know, really putting on a show, which is really cool. That's a hammerhead. Chasing one of them. Uh, hammerhead. Oh man. Dang. What's he doing? It was a fun day. Got to do, uh, got to fish with blue runners, catch some kingfish, see a hammerhead, and just have a good time on the water. Hope this helps you guys out. If you guys got any questions about, you know, jigging up blue runners, what sabiki rig to use, what rod, anything like that, check the link or the, check the description for links or just comment on our video and, you know, we'll help you out as best we can. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you on the next video. Don't forget to like and subscribe.